name revealed. There is no J in Hebrew. Amen. And the, the, the knowledge of the Lord is increasing in the earth. Praise God. And he's revealing to us things that we didn't know sometime, some years ago. Praise the Lord. And, and, and you know, you don't have to take our word for it. Praise God. What you need to do is check the Bible, study to show yourself approved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Study for yourself. Don't take anything the preacher say at face value. Can you say amen? amen? Don't take nothing. That's why you need your Bible. Get your Bibles. If you don't get your phones, get your iPads, get your gadgets, whatever you need. Don't take the preacher's word. Take the word of God. Hello. Amen. Don't believe it. The preacher can be a good man, but we make mistakes. I know I've made mistakes. I had to go back and correct myself. We're, the Bible says that some of us are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So you can get information but be the wrong information. Amen. I'm understanding some things now that I didn't understand some time ago. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me hear you through your mask. Say Jesus. All right, y'all got them muff y'all got them mufflers on. You're gonna have to talk a little louder. You want to say amen a little louder with your muffler. Amen. Praise God. Need them when you're in an argument at the house. <laughs> y'all trying to get some st straight at the house. <laughs> well, praise him. <laughs> Would have kept a whole lot of us from saying some stuff we shouldn't have said. I have to come back later and say, honey, I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> well, God bless you. I can't tell whether you're smiling or not, but that's all right. I'm a priest to you anyhow. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And those of y'all from the churches of, that are a little more relaxed say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Takes a little more energy to say Holy Ghost. Your hair kind of raise up on the back of your neck when you say Holy Ghost. So some folk was taught the Holy Spirit, and some of y'all say the Holy Ghost, but they're all the same. Yeah. Amen. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now we live in the dispensation or the time of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. That's where we live. All right? Look around. The Holy Spirit is in the room. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, when we say Jesus is in the room, uh, you if we said Jesus was in the room and you would be looking for him, you'd probably be looking for one singular Jesus. But Jesus is in the room through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you saved? Let me hear you say, I'm saved. I'm saved. You just cut some time off the altar call if you're saved. Amen. Everybody, let me see the hands of those in the room that say you're saved. Amen. Okay. We got one person that didn't raise their hand. Once saved, always saved. We'll deal with that in another sermon. But those of you in this room are saved. Amen. All right? If you say, that means that you are set apart. Amen. All right? Amen. There's no such thing as I'm saved, but I'm not set apart. Let me see the hands of those of you who are set apart. Amen. Now, if you don't know this, I'm telling you. If you're saved, that means you're set apart. Because if you're saved, how can you be saved and in the boat with those who's sinking? You either got rescued or you drowned. And when you save people out of the water, you set them apart. So I'm going to ask you again, are you saved? All right, that sounds better. So now you're set apart. To be set apart means to be sanctified. Now here's where it's going to get a little rusty, but y'all going to answer right. Are you sanctified? 
It took you, took you a while to answer. But are you sanctified? <coughs> Only the people with the long dresses on are sanctified. <coughs> Only those that wore the dresses to church is sanctified. So that lead the men out. Okay. So to be sanctified means to be set apart. Jesus is not coming back for people who are just born again. You just can't be just coming. Jesus is not just coming back for Christians. He's coming back for Christians who are saved. They are set apart. They are sanctified. And all that comes through being born again. Born again doesn't mean anything if you don't understand that you are born now into a, a new kingdom. And you are saved. You are set apart. You are sanctified. Now, how does a sanctified person act? Yeah, just think about it for a minute. You ain't got the answer, but think about it. If, if, if you know any sanctified people other than yourself, how do they act? When you was a little kid and you knew or heard of a sanctified man or woman, Somebody, the people where I came from, they always pointed out the sanctified people. They would. Could have been your, your relative. They would say, that's brother so-and-so, and he's sanctified. Anybody ever heard that conversation in church or the table? Somebody would say, you know, preacher would say, yes, sir, Reverend so-and-so, and he's sanctified. Or... Somebody said, we're going to visit that church, and they are sanctified church. Am, am, am I that old? Well, this, they, some of you youngsters, I ain't never heard that. I understand, but I'm going to teach you a little church history. There was a time when people would point to other people and say, that's uh, them, their church, and they go to a sanctified church. We would make a distinction. I go to this kind of church, but they go to a sanctified church. And so when you went over there, you already was prejudiced or predisposed that whatever they did was different than your church because a sanctified church usually meant that they were exuberant in their worship. They hollered, they screamed, they jumped up and down, they did the funky chicken. I mean, the old women danced around in circles, they sweated, they shook hands hard, they hollered, ah! I mean, they did some weird stuff. That was different from your church where everybody sat there dignified. You know, the preacher preached long. Your preacher started tuning soon as he got started. <laughs> he gave them gravy. You, was, you knew when to start sleeping. Ooh. But the sanctified people, they wore their clothes was different back in the day. Hair was different. You know, don't mean that they wasn't any the same outside of church sometime. But true sanctified people was always talking about Jesus. They, they carried the biggest Bibles that the Bible company manufactured. They carried usually the Bible that's on the coffee table with them to church. That big Bible with big illustration of the pictures of Jesus and Peter there. That's what they carried to church. And they stay in church all day. And everything was bless God. 
Ha! They get quicker. You be talking to them. Hey! <laughs> and you get close to them, they want to oil you up. They were, they were sanctified. They was always being quicker. And so there was a fight between regular churches and sanctified churches. Because if you happen to join a sanctified church, your folks, was, your people will start talking about you. You're over there with them sanctified people now. You don't do the stuff you used to do. You don't carry on like you used to carry on now. Sometimes. Sometimes you get over the sanctified people, you still do the same stuff because you come up with eight new kids. <laughs> but you just go into the sanctified church, you know, because of the worship. But I ain't going to go there. But true sanctified. They pre-holiness. And, and the regular churches didn't preach holiness. What we call holiness, they use the word. Is holiness or hell? You go in church, ain't nobody preach holiness or hell. Y'all been in church that long? No, y'all Y'all just started church. Huh? Well, they used to preach holiness or hell. Anybody remember that? Y'all make me feel like a dinosaur. They used to preach holy. Y'all ain't heard that in a long time. But don't tell a lie up in here. <laughs> Y'all ain't heard it in a long time. They don't preach that no more. Amen. They don't preach it. They ain't preached it in 20 years, Amen. 30. I'm just going to tell the truth. They quit preaching it. They're trying to build membership. Yeah. When you try to build membership, you can't preach the two H's. <laughs> you can't. It's either holiness or hell. Folk listen to this now, get turn to switch the channel because <laughs> folk don't want to hear that. But the truth of the Bible is that we have to be ye holy as I am holy. Or we're going to be lost forever. I soften it up. See how I soften it up? It's either holiness or, or you're going to be lost forever. That makes us uncomfortable, don't it? Be ye holy as I am holy, or you'll be lost. But they went right to the, to the, to the, to the juggler with it and said, it's holiness or hell. They didn't soften it up like I just made it real palatable. I made it go down easy. You got to love Jesus with all your heart or you may be lost. See how I fixed it up, made it 21st century so you could swallow it. But they didn't do it that way. They said, you got to be holy or you're going to hell. They preached it just like that. It wasn't no shucking and jiving about it, see. But I'm, I'm going to give it to you like you like it. Uh, you, you got to love God with all your heart or you, you may not make it in. This church will swell up if I keep it like that. <laughs> but Jesus said, Jesus said, The word says, be ye, you be, holy. So then now we got to play with the word and say, well, holy don't mean what it means. It means, <laughs> okay. Y'all keep playing with the finish line. The only way you can be holy is you got to have relationship, fellowship, and you got to know personally the Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Oh, boy, I just rocked y'all's world, didn't it? The Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, so many Christians think they know Jesus, but they don't know Jesus because they don't know the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to tell it to you like that and because uh, I ain't got but short time and go ahead and offend you. You can't know Jesus if you don't know the Holy Spirit. It is impossible 
for you to know Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, if you don't know the Holy Spirit. Because if, if to know Jesus, you had to be introduced and taught by the Holy Spirit. Peter said to Jesus one time, he says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon boy Jonah. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Your preacher didn't tell you this. Your mama didn't teach you this. Your the good people didn't, couldn't have taught you this. The Holy Spirit had to reveal who I am. Most people know Jesus because their pastor taught them, their parents taught them, but they don't have a revelation of who he is themselves. Because until the Holy Spirit teach you who he is, you will have a false Christ in your life. You will have the kind of Christ, and we all have sinned and come short, but you will have the kind of Christ that will permit you to do any and everything you want to do, and you will have no remorse about it. Now, I just hit you between the teeth. Bow! And that's what a lot of the world do. We all sin and come short, but when you know the Holy Spirit, he will, I'm going to show you here in a minute, the true Holy Spirit, it, 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 it is having Christ just like having Jesus. It ain't, it's not a substitute. Jesus humbled himself and gave all glory to God. The Holy Spirit, when Jesus was in the earth, was with the Father. The two of them were supporting Jesus. Now that the Holy Spirit is in the earth, the Father and the Son are supporting the Holy Spirit. But he is a person. He's not an it. And I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes to get you to reunite with him. Check out how you've been treating him and how you see him. Because so many Christians do not see him as a person, they see him as a thing, as a non-entity at, at, at the table. He's an equal partner. He's not a subordinate partner. If Jesus Christ was sitting right here now where I'm sitting, said it, or he was sitting anywhere in the room, how would we behave? How would we think if he was in the car with you, if he was at the house with you? If you had company, if you and your spouse was talking, if you, how would you? You know, we need to, like they made the kids carry a baby around, girls, to see how it is to be with child at 12 and 13. I, we've had them come in here over the years, a long time ago, and they got this little baby on their arm, and it was a project so that they could see what it's like to have a baby so you don't go out and have a baby. We need to get some pretend Jesuses and carry them around and so we can see what is re be reminded uh, because the Holy Spirit is with us if we're Christians. And, and it takes a revelation, a true revelation, that if you knew Jesus is... Oh, God, help me. You're going to have to help me, Holy Spirit. You're going to have to help me here now. You know, the proof <coughs> that we don't honor God is how we do things that we wouldn't do in front of Mom and him. If they was looking, we wouldn't say, come on, y'all, give me some better amen. Y'all don't want to make me preach a long time. <laughs> Maybe y'all just soaking it in, ain't you? You know, when you was cutting up for mama them, you ran and hide it. You look once, you look twice, you look three times. Then you look another time. I <laughs> didn't you? But we haven't got the revelation that the Lord, 
the seven spirits of the Lord, he got eyes all over him. I'm, I'm just being honest. And he can see and hear everything. That's a revelation in itself. I mean, true sanctification. I'm making it tight in here for us. Boy, we're we going to be squeaky clean with the blood here in a minute. True sanctification is know that the Lord sees and hears everything. But the reason we don't care is because we don't have a relationship with a person like we ought to. Because when you don't have a relationship with a person... We say, I don't care what they say. So we got to renew our relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. We cool with the church. We cool with our families. We cool with the bishop. We cool with the rev. We cool with the deaconship. But we ain't cool. We cool with the choir. But we ain't, we ain't as cool with the Holy Spirit. We think we're cool with Jesus, Jesus. And Jesus is pointing, what is the Spirit saying? Because it's the Spirit that's doing the talking. He's only saying, the Spirit is saying what Jesus is saying. When we get revelation, do you know it comes from Jesus to the Holy Spirit? <coughs> Excuse me. When the Lord visited me, it didn't just come Jesus directly. It came through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, God. The Holy Spirit is doing the talking. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. It's the Holy Spirit that's doing the revealing. Okay, y'all ain't going to say much. The Holy Spirit shares the same name as the Father. See, he don't get his proper, his respect. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, we honor Yahweh. We honor Jesus. But the Holy Spirit, the whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. He's not an inferior like a gopher. You know, he's not like the paper boy. He's like, well, I will send Pookie at it. Go get him, Pookie. He, he, he's... He's God. He's omnipotent. They all three had their time, and this is the time of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't take anything from Jesus. It takes nothing from Jesus. Jesus spoke so much about the Holy Spirit coming because they are one. We may not understand it because we haven't had any relationships like that where it's three people, three persons in one. But they are one, inseparable. John says it, <clears throat> that there's three in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Word. And these three are one. <coughs> Excuse me. These three are one. And you're not going to separate them. You're not going to divide mom and daddy like you divide mom and daddy. You're going to divide the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God. You ain't going to do it. Amen. They are one. You can never divide them. And so he even has, he carries the same name. As the, as the God here. Amen. 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 Praise him. <clears throat> Jesus said, I'm going to send you another comforter. The word comforter in the Greek is alos, another of the same kind, identical. I'm going to send you an identical representative of me. He going to be in you. He gonna walk through you. He'll be just. It'll be just like having a mannequin with the same kind of hair. Your image of Jesus in the flesh, you know, whether he's a Jesus that looked like the Jesus over there on the wall, the blonde hair, blue eyed, everybody tripping. He ain't got no blonde hair, blue eyed. Well, whatever your image is of him, Amen. if he's a black man with woolly hair and brown feet, whatever, <clears throat> you know, if he got a, a banana looking nose, you whatever your image of him. Every person throughout history try to figure out. What I think he looked like. If he looked like your people, he looked like a Spanish person. If he looked like a caramel person, if he's a black man with a bald head, whatever he looked like, he says, in the spirit, he's going to be identical to me, the same kind. Not almost identical, but, you know, he almost looked like his daddy, but he ain't quite. I can tell the difference. You ain't going to be able to tell the difference from the Holy Spirit 
and Jesus. Like you can't tell the difference from Jesus and God. You can't tell the difference. Jesus is the express image of the Father. You wouldn't know what God looked like if Jesus hadn't showed you. Jesus is the way you know that God is merciful. You would think God is a killer because that, that's all God would be showing you, the Old Testament God. God, you know, he, he, he was nice for a minute, but if you broke one of his commandments, he'd come and wipe you all out. You wouldn't know that God was a healer and he would heal, heal cancer, that God could cast out demons. Jesus is the one that showed us the compassion of God. Jesus is the express image of God. If God wore earth clothes, man's clothes, and had hair and feet, if God would cry, he would look like Jesus. When God chose Jesus, he didn't choose something that was inferior to his look. If somebody going to be a clone of you, if, if, if you had somebody, they say that something, you know how people say, I seen somebody look just like you, and they show you a picture, you be like, that don't look like me. <laughs> and you know, somebody be trying to say, man, I seen a person look like you, and look, look, that look like you. You be looking at they, oh, they don't look like me. You know, they, <laughs> you be thinking, what you, <laughs> you looking at me wrong. That ain't me. <laughs> that dude looked like, kind of, well, Jesus didn't kind of look like God. Yeah. He looked all the way like God. Yeah. And so he says, I'm going to send you a representative that's going to look just like me, identical. Yeah. But he shall be in you, yeah. and he shall be with you. And the trick of the enemy with the church is that we think we know Jesus, but that spirit that's in us who has a certain function, we ignore him. And if Jesus was hanging with us, would we treat him that way? The job of the Holy Spirit is to give us power. One of his, his functions is to give us power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, that's at home, that's in your church. That's around Christ. If you can't be a witness in your church, good God Almighty. I mean, really, if you can't be a witness in your church, if your church is so despicable, you in, in the church with other eggs, I mean, that, that's just crazy. People that got the same spirit. You can't be a witness in your house. Oh, man, y'all ain't saying it. Good God Almighty. You can't be a witness in your own home. That's Jerusalem, your house. You can't be a Christian at your house. It's supposed to start at, oh, God, don't make me preach. Boy, we'll be here all night. You can't be a Christian at your house first. The place where you lie down, where your kids is, where your husband is, where your wife is, where somebody know you. That's where it starts. The Holy Spirit, like, be a Christian at the house. Learn Christian principles at the house. Jesus had to learn at the carpenter shack with, uh, with Joseph and Mary. He had to learn right there at that synagogue where he went. And he said, the book, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he said, and he finished up by saying, today is the scripture fulfilled. And they said, who is this man? We think this is the carpenter's son. What's going on with him? But they still hadn't found any fault in him. It starts at Jerusalem. Go home and be a, be a wife to your husband. Be a husband to your wife. Be a mother to your kids. Be a, be a kid to your parents. Amen. Children, obey your parents. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost. All this acting a fool at the house and then coming to church, that ain't no God. That ain't no Jesus. Amen. Jesus at home got married him, jacked up, got Joseph, cussing Joseph out, you know, shanking Joseph with the carpenter tools, 